Hey, we're back in Reactor today, and I want to do some modulation synthesis, specifically a ring modulator. We can do FM synthesis or different kinds of AM synthesis in Reactor, but I want to build this into our part 5 synth, and if I were going to make an FM synthesizer, I'd probably start fresh and design it in a slightly different way than we already have our sort of wavetable subtractive synthesizer so far. I'm going to start by just building my ring modulator macro in a new ensemble, and then we're going to copy and paste it over to our part 5 ensemble. A quick warning that, as always, I'm going to ruin all of your presets. So if you have presets that you like, you should keep your old part 5 synthesizer and then save this as something new. So let's get started. Make a new ensemble, command N, delete my inputs. What I want to start with this time is just a very simple sine wave oscillator. Enter, sine, and I want to make sure I get this sine oscillator here. Next, let's get our note pitch MIDI in, and our gate. I'm going to do something a little bit cheap, but I'm just going to, after my gate, put in an AR envelope. And the reason for this is just to get rid of the popping. I'm not even going to create controls for the attack and release there. I'm just going to leave them as the default. Let's listen. Okay, there's our sine wave oscillator. For our ring modulator, we're going to multiply two sine waves together. The waveforms you multiply don't have to be sine waves, but if you use complex waveforms, different things will happen with the sidebands. So let's start simple for now. Let's start, though, by making a macro. I'm going to call this macro ring mod. All right, go inside. In, out, and this time before I forget, let me plug that in. All right, so now all we're going to need here, multiply, take our input, and we're going to multiply it by another sine oscillator. Now, a couple things I'm going to do differently. I'm not going to create a note pitch and gate for this. The A, I'm going to create a constant. And so this sine wave will always be at its maximum amplitude of 1. And then let's create a control for the pitch. Our ring modulator is going to create sidebands around the pitch that we play on the keyboard. And the distance of that sideband is going to be determined by this pitch knob. If I wanted to, I could make that a frequency knob instead, but just for today, we'll leave this be. So now, let me play some keys. Okay, that was a major scale, believe it or not. Let's turn this pitch down. So we have some freaky space sounds. Important to think about the sidebands. Again, we can go into sub audio. And if we go into negative numbers, they fold back up. So when I hold down, uh, what should I do? Let's hold down C. You can hear it sort of fold over like that. When I have it at zero, though, It's almost like a tremolo, so I, I'm not really sure what's happening there. It might be just not actually zero and we have some phase difference or constructive or destructive interference. I don't know what's going on in Reactor there. But what would be nice is if we had a way to turn this off. I'm going to copy and paste this macro, so I want to make sure I have it the way that I want it before I bring it over to my Ensemble 5. So if we want to make a bypass, all I need to do is do this, and then do that. And so let's rename the top input to off, right, because that will be bypassing the ring modulator, and the bottom input to on. Clean up our panel. 
I don't like uh, that switch, that it says switch there. Let's go to view, let's hide the label. Lock it down, off, on. All right, maybe let's do a couple more things. Let's I'm gonna hide the value of that. That's kind of nice. And then the other thing I was gonna do is let's make that a medium sized knob. Small. All right, so there's my ring mod. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go command C. And now I'm gonna open up that part five synth. As I said, I'm gonna ruin this. So if you have presets you like, I would save them now. Let's go in and check this out. I'm gonna start by deleting oscillators two through four and go into my oscillator one macro. I'm gonna put this ring modulator before the on off switch, but after the waveform. There are a couple places I could put this, but I wouldn't wanna put it before the waveform selector because then it would only work on certain selections of the waveform. Whether or not it becomes before or after this switch probably doesn't make a difference. And then the only other thing is you could mix all of your oscillators together and then ring modulate, or you could even filter and ring modulate at the end like it's a kind of plug-in effect. I like the idea of putting it in the oscillator though, because now I can choose individual oscillators to have ring mod, they don't all have to have it on it, and then I can also filter the output of that ring mod. Let's go back to the panel real quick. Oops, that's not what I want to move. That's the one I want to grab. Here's my ring mod there. So now let's go back in. Command E. Command E. Come back to four oscillators again. Let's name them right, just so we can make sure we have all of our controls set up correctly. Okay. Plug it back into the mixer. And let's go back to our panel now. Clean it up. That's number two, three. Okay, there we go. Lock it down. So let's turn the ring mod off on all of these. Let's bring in our oscillators one by one. Once again, just to isolate things. Here's oscillator one. Nice saw wave, got some vibrato. Let's turn the ring mod on. Okay, we'll keep it simple for now. I'll make it a triangle. So what's happening now is all of those harmonics are being split into their sidebands, right? So a sine wave just has that one frequency, and so you end up with two sidebands. A triangle has a whole bunch of different frequencies across its harmonic spectra, so each one of those gets split into its sidebands. Kind of a nice bell sound, and then we could mix back in a sawtooth wave. put in a sine wave here, put the ring mod on, and a different value for pitch. So because these sidebands are not necessarily harmonics, and are more often than not inharmonic, this adds a little bit of dissonance to the sound, so people tend to say it's good for making bell-like, gong-like sounds. And of course, if we don't like it, we can turn it off. But it's a nice way to add a little bit of dimension to sounds. That's all I'm gonna do today. Give it a shot. Let me know how it goes.